I got to cover weightlifting at the 2000 Olympic Games in Sydney, Australia. I got to do play-by-play -play for that, and that was real challenging. He lifted it. No, he didn't. Um, <laughs> and it was tough because the Bulgarian team was taking a, a lot of drugs, and so you'd, you'd call an event and the gold would be presented and you'd go on and you'd say, yes, he's won gold, but he's yet to pee. Remember that, folks. He's... Uh, nonetheless, this is a guy I've been looking forward to, to getting up here and saluting tonight. Please welcome to the stage our next inductee, Mr. Donald McVicker. Donald McVicker attributes his massive strength to his father and grandfather, who were both miners in the depths of industrial Cape Breton. McVicker recalls his father's power. He says at one time he was working as an orderly in a hospital. He was tending to a patient and while supporting him, reached to grab a toilet roll and he pulled six tiles off the wall. <laughs> I'm guessing at that point he needed more toilet paper. The, uh, when his father and grandfather wanted to build their muscles, they couldn't afford real weights, which were at a premium price. So what did they do? They connected two buckets of cement to a pole. But besides inheriting the body strength of his seniors, Donald McVicker has a strength of mind that has led him to Canadian, North American, and world championships in his chosen sport of powerlifting. Now, Donald McVicker stands under five feet tall. He is slight of build, weighing about 114. But when he was competing in powerlifting from 1978 to 1983, he was the strongest man in Canada in his weight class. He held 38 Canadian records, was twice North American champion, and ranked as high as second in the world. He was born in Donkin, Cape Breton, and he praises his mother for giving him the drive and the focus to work through situations that occur when you're weightlifting. He says, my mom was always there for me. She even prepared everything before I went to a lifting competition, labeling and laying out my clothes. He didn't start powerlifting until he was 22. Then living and working in Hamilton, Ontario, he was jogging one afternoon and passed a building where several people were working with weights. He stopped, asked some questions of these members of Steel City Powerlifting Club of Hamilton, and was immediately recruited by coach Bill Jameson. On his first attempt, McVicker lifted 315 pounds. Within three months, he had broken three Canadian bench press records and finished fourth at the World Championships in Dayton, Ohio. In his prime, he was working with weights for three hours a night, four nights a week. He was diet conscious as well, paying attention to meat, fish, and eggs and he was winning. He says dieting was the hardest thing of all. He'd have to make the weight limit and usually had only a few hours to get down to it. It meant sweating, working out, sweating some more, not eating a thing, and finally qualifying in his class. Six weeks before one competition, he was 14 pounds over the weight limit. It was strictly fish eggs and lettuce from then on. And the last two days, he had nothing. He says, by the time of the competition, I was down to 4% body fat. When he was in London, England, his coach told him he couldn't go anywhere, couldn't walk because that would sap his strength and you needed all of it for the 30 seconds of each lift. He says, there I was in a place I had never been and I couldn't see a thing. The training was tough enough, but especially when you're holding down a full-time job at DeFasco. You're on a diet and then you work for eight hours and train another four. At 23, he was fourth in a world competition. He later won Ontario, Eastern Canadian, Canadian and North American titles. In 1981, at age 25, he lifted 10 times his body weight in a competition at Santa Clara, California. His top lifts were 485 pounds in the squat, 297 in the bench press, and 434 pounds in the dead press, all Canadian records at the time. And he recalls warmly the sacrifices his folks made for him and his siblings. He says, in 1979, the only time they came to the World Championships, they drove through a rainstorm, had to fix a flat tire, arrived in Dayton, Ohio at 3 a.m., but they were there for me at my first Worlds. His mother actually made him apple pies that he could enjoy in the two-hour window between weigh-in and competition. <laughs> at one competition, Donald missed his first two lifts, which is dangerous because if you miss a third, you're gone. Of all the people cheering, he says, as I tried the third, I could only hear my folks encouraging me, come on, Donnie, you can do it, you'll be okay, and I did it. That was in Dayton, where he placed fourth, at his first try in world competition. A member of Hamilton's Sports Wall of Fame at Cops Coliseum, McVicker was always squeaky clean 
in a sport now rife with substance abuse. He says, and I love this, he says, I got into the sport to see how strong I was. Winning wasn't all that important. Athletes today seem to no longer be there for the fun. They're being pressured to win and they'll cheat to do it. McVicker is now 45. He stopped lifting in 1983, but he is more than a power lifter. He's an avid church worker, organizing a youth group, playing flute in the church band, singing in the choir, and teaching Sunday school. And he organized a floor hockey league at church, played some tennis, and swam with his wife, and continues to work at Dofasco. What a guy, as we welcome Donald McVicker to the Nova Scotia Sport Hall of Fame. We have Scott Ferguson, please, the general manager of the Halifax Metro Center to come forward as well. You heard during his introduction, he has an outstanding interest in young people. And tonight, we've invited two members of the Dartmouth Boys and Girls Club to present Don with his induction pin, indicative of his membership now in the hall, Grace Keeping and Cody Atmansky, both 12 years old. Would you come forward as well, please? Now, Donald, don't go too far. I want to read this for you as well. It says, on behalf of the city of Hamilton, I would like to extend my congratulations for being inducted into the Nova Scotia Sport Hall of Fame. I commend you on your accomplishment and wish you all the best in the future. Yours sincerely, Robert E. Wade, the mayor of Hamilton. Would you mind tonight expanding just a little bit on the role your parents played in your success? They both sacrificed their lives for the benefits of myself and my sisters and brothers. And my sister's here tonight, and a lot of cousins, and I thank them for coming. And my wife is at home right now. She couldn't make it, but um, she's been a tremendous drive behind it all. And my mom, there's stories that are hidden and quiet that what my mom and dad have done to make all this happen. My sister and brothers have been the best also, and I thank them. So you're, you're 22 years old, you're jogging through the streets of Hamilton, you stop and you do some lifting and something strikes you and something grabs you. What was it about the sport? You fail miserably every night in, in weightlifting, like there was a, something that happened, but something, somebody said many years ago, they planted a seed when I was in high school, and one of the coaches from another team, they said, that fellow has a lot of strength, don't ever let him give up on working out or doing sport. That stuck in my mind and I saw those weights and they just flowed out and through the power of God and his granting a coach to harness that strength, everything just clicked and when I touched the weights I just went on fire and it just was so joyful to do that. Yeah, you only lifted 315 your first time. What was wrong? <laughs> um, <laughs> can, can you tell me as a last question, what is that feeling like when you come out in competition and there's a theater full of people and it's you, the platform, and the weight and you just get that, that gnawing feeling that yes, I can do this. What is that like? It's quiet. You're focused at the end of the uh, arena or hall like this and your coach is giving you instruction and it's very detailed and then all of a sudden when the lift starts, you start to move and you only hear your coach, and if you're mom or dad, or sister and brother, you hear them, and then the rest of the crowd comes up, and they give you the encouragement. So all of you people, all the times that you cheer at arenas or schools or for the kids, these wonderful two kids here, um, that is a strength that comes from all of you people that is, just makes things happen. And all right, you, you gave me goosebumps there. That was beautiful.
Mom, thank you for the apple pies, folks. Donald McVicker.